guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you're into 3D printing, photography and drones, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you won't miss anything. We're talking about a printer today, we're talking about the Flying Bear Ghost 5, you can see it here, it's printing, it's super silent and I've had it since the beginning of summer and I've put it to the stress test. I wanted to keep this uh, review uh, for the right moment because I, want, I really wanted to test it out uh, to its maximum performance, test all different kind of materials and I must say that it's a pretty impressive 3D printer. Let's roll the intro first and let's talk about it. Before getting into the review I would like to tell you about a collaboration I have ongoing with this real good friend of mine, his name is Giuseppe, he runs an Instagram page, it's called 3D Print All, if you know me by now, you know I mention him every, every time, every video, because it's a really, really great connection we have. We're sharing information, we're talking about printers, we're talking about filament, exchanging opinion on producers and stuff like that. And his page, 3D Print All, is a great place to go and boost your creativity, find some new ideas and see how he plays with the application of electronics to 3D printing. All Giuseppe's link will be down in the description. Go pay Giuseppe a visit, you will love it. As mentioned previously, I've had this printer since the beginning of June, so the entire summer, of course summer, I printed less because kids were off school, so testing were, was a bit slower than usual. But we're talking about a different printer from like usual, the usual printer I review. This is a Core XY printer, which means that the Z is not moving vertically to the top, but it's moving to the bottom, and X and Y are staying like straight, they won't move. What does that mean? That means that Z wobble is not a thing anymore, and in theory, it should be faster. The Flying Bear Ghost 5 is a partially enclosed 3D printer, which makes it particular and unique. It's very strong and firm on the table and vibration for her are not a thing. Let's see how the unboxing went because it took a little while to put together. Nothing difficult, just time consuming, but it was a great experience because you understand how it all comes together. The unboxing experience was premium and you can easily tell that they have done a great job in preserving all parts with foam and covers. All sensitive parts were already assembled together and the only thing I had to put together was the enclosure frame and some wire connections at the end. It took me almost one hour to assemble it entirely. It was not hard and I found very useful the videos that uh, Flying Bear Ghost has on their YouTube uh, channel. I will link them down in the description. Anyhow, absolutely no problem putting it together. The first feeling is a feeling of strength and firmness in the entire frame. It's heavy and as mentioned, vibration will never be an issue again if you well position uh, the printer. Let's talk about some specs. Print area is 255 by 210 by 200 on the Z. What makes this printer special is the full metal frame structure, which is really firm as mentioned. It's closed loop synchronization belt and the, the aluminium profile gives it a really, really nice look and I'm sure it's really, really reliable. It mounts a BMG dual drive extruder system, combines high performance and resolution with low weight. You can easily print PLA, PT, TPU and ABS if you complete the enclosure of course. 
32-bit motherboard to achieve near silent operation. The printer is going on right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but I really doubt it. The X and Y axes are driven by TMC2208 with low noise and high precision. There is a mechanical stop for the Z and magnetic for the X and Y. It comes with a filament sensor, which will alert you when the filament is run out or has broken. Resume print works perfectly, which stores all the information and position of the printhead in case of print failure. As you saw, it's a really, really pretty uh, 3D printer. It's kind of unique with its design. And what I really loved was the touch screen. It has a 3.5 inch uh, display touch screen. The possibility of putting it in many different language. Another thing I liked is the bed, the printing bed. They call it sticky coated glass bed, which doesn't basically make any sense. But what it does basically is that it really keeps your part firm while it's printing and only when it's cooled down the print comes off like very very easily it happened to me that a print finished and i wasn't here for a long time when i came back it was loose on the on the bed which is great and leaves a really really nice um uh, translucent base on on your print so i really like that you may asking yourself how does this printer print how are the prints and I would like to show you some because I've used many different materials. I would like to start by the hardest one, which is TPU. And even though it's a Bowden and usually with a Bowden uh, extruder 3D printer, you don't have that great results on TPU. But I must say that this printer with the dual extruder that it has, it prints even better than some of the dark drive I have. And I want to show you something. This is the first cube I printed out. This is a chip cap cube. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna put a close up right now. It printed out like perfectly. Print down the first layer of, uh, of the TPU material. That's the hard part. There's no elephant foot. So that means the plate is really nice and leveled. Something I have not mentioned is that this printer doesn't have auto bed leveling. It's all manual. It's really straightforward, very easy to do. I've done that once and never done that again since the beginning of June and no elephant foot in any of my prints. And the bed is like perfectly leveled still from there. And believe me guys, I've used this printer a lot. TPU, here's another example, elastic bands. I printed out these to keep the Bowden tube. I don't know if you can see it over there. I put a close up on that as well. But like TPU, really, really impressed with what it can do. Then of course, I printed PLA and PLA turned out really, really good. This is in vase mode and it printed out spectacular, as I told you, glassy bottom on the, on the top. This is a gizmo model. This was printed with uh, white PLA from Eason. I'm working on a review on this filament. Really, really great filament, by the way. Then, I've printed out this. This is a model of the Mandalorian, no support needed. It came out amazingly. This model, the first time I printed this, I was reviewing another uh, 3D printer and I understood from the details that it's a hard print and results here are amazing. This is a silk copper from Azure Film, printed in vase mode, 0.8 result is amazing i mean you, you can see it it's uh it's a beautiful vase material is really really good what can you ask more from a 3d printer another print i would like to show you is this van this is a volkswagen van it's printed in multi-material in different pieces 
the frame is regular PLA together with the wheels and the roof. But this is PTG. This is a piece of green uh, glitter PTG from Azurfilm and it came out amazingly as you can see. Right now the printer is printing in vase mode and it's printing a really really great model. I will probably show you on Instagram later uh, these days or if I make it before the editing of the video I will show you as well this. Let's talk about some negative points, what I didn't like of this printer. What I didn't like was at first the spool on the back, it makes it very uncomfortable to, you know, uh, do a print, multicolor print, it's not easy to operate, especially if you have it on the shelf. If you have it on the desk, it's not a problem, you just turn around and do it. But I had to improve that spool holder because sometimes it got stuck. So I printed out this model from Thingiverse, and put it in place and I would say it rolls much much better. Another thing that I've noticed is the cooling. I think I'm going to print out some of the models that are on the internet. Cooling of uh, the filament laying down is not that even, it blows just in one direction. I saw a model on Thingiverse, I'll download, I'll link it down in the description of a small, you know, um, piece that you can put, print and it will blow air on three or four sides of the nozzle. Probably that will, you know, level up your print and give that little bit of more of cooling that it needs. But I mean, even though it's printing out without any of that, it's working pretty great. Last thing that I didn't like is the position of the SD card. I would have rather preferred a USB plug just close to the display. It's a bit hard to put the SD card, especially if you're not looking and it's very close to the border of the frame. And I think I've lost a couple already in between the printer chassis. So that could have been improved. And I hope they keep this suggestion and use this suggestion for the future Flying Bear Ghost. But other than that, I didn't have any major issues uh, I opened that and I replaced the hot end because I needed a new one, but that was user, uh, user wise. I mean, it's part of regular uh, 3D printing uh, and 3D printers maintenance. So nothing related to the printer itself, but on how much I was using it. Would I suggest this printer? I would definitely suggest it. I mean, you can find it around for 300 euros, even less a couple of months ago. I saw a very great offer on uh, AliExpress or Banggood, I can't remember. Anyway, all the links to buy this printer will be down in the description. Would I suggest this printer to a beginner? Probably not. I would suggest, uh, definitely suggest it to somebody who already has one printer and then start uh, thinking with it, you know, trying to understand what part is what and you know playing around also the putting together part that's a bit of a hassle for somebody who doesn't have uh, manual uh, <coughs> skills it took me an hour following a video again the video is great really really funny because it has this guy with red gloves but it does everything perfectly and it's very easy to follow even for somebody who's not an expert so definitely suggest this printer, great bargain for, for the price. Anybody who buys this printer will understand very, very fast that it will be a go-to printer. This printer is standing on my desk already a long time and it became my go-to printer. I know that it's reliable. I just put a uh, slice a piece on Kura, put it on the SD, load it and leave the house. I know that when I will come back, the print will be done and it will be good. Last thing I want to say is that every printer I test, every 3D printer I test, I like always to use 2.0 or draft mode, whatever you want to call this. I don't like to use 0.1 or 0.16 because that's not the real product delivered. I want to always test my printers on 2.0, which is a standard definition of a printer that can tell a lot about it. I really hope guys you enjoyed this video, smash the like button if you did, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and I'll see you guys on the next video.